Hey, Kellen. I'm Tyler Thompson with Kentucky Sports Radio. I'm a class of 2006 Davidson alum. So I just wanted to say welcome to Kentucky. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your experience at Davidson and how you think it'll help you at Kentucky? You know, it was a, you know, a memorable four years for me and um, filled with um, some adversity and a lot of enjoyable moments. Um, you know, as a freshman, uh, I was fortunate enough to play a lot of minutes and uh, we won an Atlantic 10 championship and secured an NCAA bid, um, which was, you know, a, kind of an amazing welcome to college experience for me. Um, you know, and then we've been competitive the last three years. Uh, we've had winning seasons. Uh, it's been a, a complete joy to play for Coach McKillop and compete with my teammates, um, many of whom are going to be lifelong friends of mine. Um, you know, and I've enjoyed the, the everyday uh, campus life and, and um, you know, just being in Davidson. So it's been, uh, you know, a, an absolutely enjoyable four years and um, I couldn't be more grateful to have been able to have gone to, to Davidson. And uh, as far as preparing me for Kentucky, I've, you know, been coached by a, um, one of the best coaches in college basketball, Hall of Fame um, nominee who's got over 600 wins and, um, you know, made it all the way to lead eight a couple, what was it, 13 years ago now. So uh, he pushed me every day. I, I know what it's like to be pushed and, and play in a competitive environment. I think ultimately that will prepare me for, um, you know, the next step in my, in my college career at Kentucky. John Hale will go to you and then John Clay after that. Hey, Kellen, John Hale with the Courier Journal. I'm curious, what are your memories of that 2018 NCAA tournament game against Kentucky? I imagine at the time you did not imagine yourself playing for the other team, but but how eager were you to kind of measure yourself against the NBA kind of talent they have every year? Yeah, I did not envision that I'd uh, be able to play for Kentucky four years later. But, um, you know, that was a – it was an awesome experience. It was a humbling experience as a freshman. Um you know, I think I shot like four for 15 in that game. Um, I think I was able to get around my point point average, but I, I, uh, I struggled from the field a little bit. Um, you know, we we didn't quite have that exposure to length and athleticism in the Atlantic 10. Um, but I think in the second half, I saw it a little more. And we, as a team, were pretty competitive and I actually almost came away with a with an upset victory. Um, but it was, it was just an amazing experience being able to play um, in the tournament, like every kid dreams of, uh, in Boise in front of, you know, 15,000 fans. Um, and we were excited for the challenge at the time. Um, obviously we thought we had a chance of, of, of winning and thought we had a, a pretty good scouting report and were prepared for, um, for everything that they were doing at that time. Um, but it, it was, you know, it was, it was a great experience. And, um, you know, now I'm looking forward to being able to play for Kentucky not lose to Kentucky. John Clay, we'll go with you. Colin, what, uh, what was it about Kentucky that stuck out to you that you thought, this is where I want to be? Uh, well, multiple factors, but, um, you know, most notably, it's competitive environment. Um, it's Coach Calipari's track record of uh, really developing players and giving them um, – uh, a really, really good shot at, at becoming NBA players and, and putting putting his players in positions um, to, uh, you know, be put in next level type scenarios on the court. Um, it's a very contemporary pro style offense. Um, and, you know, from, from what I've heard and from what I've garnered from other people who've gone through the Kentucky experience, um, Coach Cal really fights for you and, and advocates for you for, for those at the next level. And it's an opportunity to be, on a, on a really good team and competitive nationally um, and play at the biggest stage, which I think is something that I need at this time. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to be able to play in front of over 20,000 fans, hopefully um, if the pandemic is in order by then. Um, and just, it's just an overall great opportunity at the biggest stage that will challenge me to compete against, you know, the highest level of college basketball on a daily basis. And I think that's what I need right now. John Wong, we'll go to you. 
Hey, Kellen, John Huang, Just the Cats. The Kentucky fan base is arguably one of the most passionate ones around. And a lot of players can find that suffocating. I know Coach Cal says Kentucky's not for everybody, but how did the passion of the fan base, either from a positive or a negative standpoint, affect uh, your decision in, in wanting to come and play here? Uh, for me, it's exciting. Um, you know, I think it's, it's a privilege um, and an honor really to be able to play in a, an environment um, like Kentucky and, and be supported by, um, you know, Big Blue Nation and such a, uh, you know, ecstatic fan base. I think, um, you know, I think with that much excitement and passion for a team, I'm sure there's, um, you know, it could potentially get overwhelming at times for, for people. And, um, but that's, I think that's part of, you know, making a, a man's decision and really stepping into uh, a big stage like that. So um, I'm excited about it overall. And, um, you know, I know Kentucky's, uh, Kentucky's fan base is loyal and, and passionate. And I think, you know, that's important for, for a college athlete to be. Have you talked, have you talked to somebody like, like Davion Mintz or even a Nate Sestina or Reed Travis, who's gone through the process that you had to, to kind of see what it's like, who other than yourself were the most instrumental people in making this decision for you? Um, I haven't talked to any of those um, players, although my dad actually went to, to Bucknell for a couple of years before he went to American. And so he has a friend, um, that knew Nate Cicino's experience and, and said that he enjoyed it. Um, and, um, you know, my, my father was, was instrumental, my, my high school coach um, and the former director of my AU program um, and my AU coach. And I, you know, it took a, a lot of um, conversations and, and I, was, I was trying to be sure that I, I approached this decision with, with diligence and, and detail and, um, you know, I'm confident wholeheartedly that I made the right decision. We're going to go with uh, Jerry Tipton next. <laughs> Jerry Tipton, Lexington Herald leader. Uh, Kellen, I understand you, I've read that you're a big Steph Curry fan. I wonder what it is about his game you like and how you might like in your game to his. Yeah, I, Steph's been a kind of a role model for me and my favorite player since I was – you know, watching him um, when he was at Davidson starting to the NCAA tournament. Um, but, you know, I had the, the privilege to actually work out with Steph um, a couple of times when I was at his camp a few summers ago. Um, and beyond, you know, his am amazing ability on the court, just seeing the way he uh, is dedicated to the game and, and how he works, um, you know, something that has inspired me to, to work with, with detail and, um, you know, and, and with precision when I'm, when I'm trying to work on my game and you know, his shooting ability, his, uh, his confidence, I think is something that is, uh, you know, arguably the best in the NBA and, um, his ability to, to play, to score at all three levels and, and make floaters, make, uh, shots in the mid range, his in between game, his, his court vision. Uh, I think we all know I could keep going. Um, but, um, you know, I've, I've tried to, to uh, more with, with Steph and what I pay attention to are the little things, you know, how he comes off screens, how he moves without the ball, which are things that I, I did a lot at Davidson and um, that I think I was able to improve on by, by watching film and, and studying guys like Steph. So, uh, you know, it's been, it's been awesome watching his, his success at the NBA. Thanks. John Hale, going to circle back to you. Helen, just what's the, the reception been to your care program that you started as you kind of focus on some issues outside of basketball? And, and what are your visions for that as you make this transition to Kentucky as well? Uh, you know, as far as on Davidson, I was, um, you know, delighted to see the way the campus reacted to it. Um, you know, a lot of students on, on various teams were, were supportive of me, um, trying to figure out ways to, do something like-minded or, or similar and um you know people from back home in boston were were you know in, incredibly supportive too so the reception overall um has been good and i've been uh fortunate um that people have supported me and you know i although i haven't 
really narrow down the nuts and bolts of what's what's next in terms of uh, how I'm going to, you know, utilize Care Kentucky and um, you know it's a, it's a larger platform which I I think benefits when the, the whole the whole point is to uh, try to have an impact on um, you know the younger generation and and kids that look up to to college athletes. Um, I've said I've said it count, countless times that I. I really looked up to college athletes when I was a when I was a kid, um, and you know these are you know social justice and racial equality are a real imperative issue. So I think um, to hear insight and, and hear college athletes read to, to kids on on the basic concept of equality, I think can can hit home with um, with with kids in sixth, seventh, fourth, fifth grade. Um, so I look forward to the next steps once we. Kind of narrow them down. John Clay, come back to you. Uh, the newcomers on this past season's team for Kentucky, because of COVID, didn't really get a full summer, or full preseason before they started the season. How important do you think is it going to be for you to get that summer and that preseason to get acclimated to the new environment and your new teammates? I think it will be vital. I think. Uh, as you just say, being able to get acclimated to to the campus, to um, you know a new level of workouts, to a different type of uh, competitive environment. I think um, you know the more preparation, the more time we have to to get used to each other and, and to uh, improve. I think um, will will only behoove us in terms of becoming uh, better for the season once once the season comes around. So. Uh, I'm excited that hopefully we'll be able to um, get together in the summer and, and, and work together. I think it will be very important. And a quick follow-up to that. Do you know any of the players on the Kentucky team? I do not personally, no. I look forward to um, being able to meet them and, and compete with them, though. Kent Spencer, WHS, you're next. Yeah, Kellen got on here uh, just a just a touch late. Was there a specific moment that you knew that this was the spot for you in your talks with John Calipari, and and what kind of sold you on that? Um, I'm not sure I can pinpoint an exact moment where um, you know it was. You know, Kentucky was my uh, I think my number one choice. Uh, unbearably throughout, throughout the process. Um, but, you know, when we, he and I watched film over Zoom and he showed me a lot of actions where, where he envisioned me um, excelling in and, and, and past actions and, and um, you know, his just his, his emphasis on, on making plays and, and, and playing with freedom um, and, you know, his belief in me that I can be an NBA player and um that he can he can truly help me get there um was was very convincing for me and that and that uh meant a lot and it, it was very easy for me to tell how genuine he was and how much he cares about his players and um you know he instills confidence in his players and that's and that to me is you know, incredibly important so um it was a combination of of great factors that that led to to my decision Guys, we've got about five more minutes here with Kellen. Uh, John Wong, I'll circle back to you. And then John Hale, coming to you again. Hey, Kellen, what is your first memory of Kentucky basketball? And also, what is your line of study uh, this coming year? Uh, first memory. You know, that's... I'm not sure I, I, I remember, I think it was, was it, the, was it Aaron or Andrew, the, the game winning shot? Um, yeah, Aaron Harrison. Aaron, yeah, against, mm -hmm. was that to go to the final four? Um, I forget how old that was. Yeah, that, that was, but, that was 2014, so. Uh, I, I'm sure, like, I'm sorry, I don't have a great answer for this, but, you know, I've, <laughs> I've paid attention to, to Kentucky, you um, like everybody else growing up that, that, you know, idolizes college basketball, um, has done. So, uh, I don't have 
you know, the, the, I can't pinpoint the exact, my exact initial memory, but I've always, you know, had a paid, paid attention and seen um, great players and, and great teams at, at Kentucky. And what are you studying this year or what, what did you major in, in at Davidson? Uh, I'm a sociology major here and I, I have not decided yet what I'm going to focus on um, this coming year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. John Hale, go ahead. Colin, there's been a lot of talk here about Cal maybe increasing the emphasis on shooting and the importance of that in the modern game. I'm curious, what did he kind of pitch to you and his vision for the offense? And specifically, what are those things that you think you can do in this system to prove yourself to the NBA? Um, he, he certainly harped on, on their need for improved shooting and scoring uh, this year. And you know, that's been something I've been fortunate enough to, to do a lot of at Davidson. Um, and, you know, he, he's confident in my ability on the ball and making plays and looking to help, uh, you know, improve that for me and, and put it at another level that will help the team. But, um, you know, he showed me a lot of off-ball actions that they've done in the past with guys like Tyler Hero, uh, Malik Monk, Jamal Murray. And, and that's been a part of my game at Davidson in a more um, – system oriented offense with a lot of off ball actions and a lot of screening and, and coming off screens and shooting. And, um, well, that's not exclusive to, to my strengths. I think it's a, it's a huge part of, of, of what I've done at, in the last four years. And, um, you know, I look forward to being able to do that at, at Kentucky as well as, as well as make plays on the ball and, and be in ball screen situations. So, um, you know, I think being able to do those things at a, at a high level or, um, can put me in a, in a good position to to move on um, to professional ranks. Guys, I don't have anything else here in the queue. We got another two or three minutes. If anybody's got anything else for Kellen? Tyler, we'll go back to you. So, Kellen, I talked to one of your coaches, Matt McKillop, yesterday. And he said he was really impressed with how you've worked on your three-point shot over the years, even though it was always pretty good. Can you tell us how it's evolved over the past couple of seasons? I think along with just the, the typical spot shooting and, and getting a lot of reps up, um, you know, off the catch. I, uh, as I mentioned, Steph, I, I've studied players and how they move without the ball and how they, how they use screens. That's something I started to work on a lot. Um, you know, having proper footwork, getting your body square, coming off screens, um, and and tried to improve the quickness also of, of my release um, and shooting off handoffs, which is something that I did a lot more this year um, and had some success with. Um, and I think you know, if you're a threat from beyond the three point line, not just off the catch, but if, you know, if you if people have to chase you around and, and then get ready for for your shot or you know your threat coming off handoffs, I think it makes it more difficult on the defense. So just being a more well-rounded well shooter and being able to make shots in different ways was something I really tried to, to work on and, and credit, you know, to, to, our, to our Davidson staff here um, for, for putting me in those situations and, and workouts and practice and then giving me the confidence to shoot them in games. David Sisk, do you have a question? I do. Um, I noticed the Davidson background there. You played for the great Bob McKillop. Uh, that's like getting a doctor's degree in basketball. Just kind of tell us how you think that prepares you for, um, you know, your, your experience at Kentucky. Uh, well, yeah, as you said, Coach is, is a great coach. And uh, you know, one of the first things I noticed when I got here as a freshman was how detailed he was and how much, you know, he'll hold you accountable over the little things and, and the details that, um, you know, just make you look more well-rounded and, um, and, and more disciplined as a player and um, creates better habits. And, and those are all things that to be successful at Davidson, you have to, um, you have to be able to do at a high level and, um, I think all that will, will really help me um, for, for, for my next step at, at Kentucky. Um, and, you know, it's been a complete joy playing for, for Coach McKillop the last four years. And 
um, you know, I'm, I'm just grateful for, for that opportunity. John Clay, why don't you finish this off? John, you mentioned about Coach Cal Perry and developing players and giving them a shot at the NBA. Is there a particular area that you feel like that you need to develop or you want to develop? Uh, I think um, there's not a, a specific area where I think, um, you know, I haven't been able to, to showcase it all, but I think for, for me, it's about being more um, better. It's about being better in all the areas where I, um, I have an ability. And I think, and I think coach Calipari can really uh, help me do that. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm looking to have an even quicker release and be able to shoot even more efficiently um, and, and, and make plays and, you know, going downhill and, and, and on the ball more. Um, and those are things that I've done at Davidson and Coach McKill put me in, in situations um, in those positions. And I think Coach Calipari is going to do the same and um, play, just playing in a, in a, at the highest level and competing against um, better athletes, more length, I think will um, only get me a lot better as a player and um, hopefully put me in a, in a good position for, for my future after college. All right, guys, we're going to end it there. I want to thank uh, Kellen so much for joining us and making time for everyone today. Wish him the best of luck finishing up at Davidson. Um, we will try to have some future opportunities for you guys here in the coming weeks and months, but we'll let you know on that uh, via email as usual. And then we'll get the uh, partial transcript and video up uh, on the Vimeo website here in a bit. So let us know if you guys have anything else. Thanks again, Kellen. Thanks, guys. Thank you.